Thank you so much for joining us for this Donor Box Academy webinar. My name is Jenna, and I am the nonprofit advocate here at Donor Box. And today I have the pleasure of just being the moderator for this webinar today. Uh, but before we begin, I would love to introduce Donor Box for those of you who are not familiar. So, Donor Box provides an affordable, easy to use, and powerful fundraising solution that enables quick and easy fundraising for you while you build lasting relationships with your supporters. From our attractive, embeddable, and customizable donation forms to our robust um, donor management systems, DonorBox works with and for you as you establish, scale, and sustain your nonprofit, meeting your needs at each stage. So you can learn more about us at DonorBox.org. And today I am so excited to introduce Kara Augsburger to help you get your year end fundraising campaign ready. We are in such good hands today. As a longtime development professional, Kara currently serves as the fundraising coach here at DonorBox and focuses on consulting with nonprofits of all sizes. She's earned her certified fundraising executive CFRE and has a master's degree in education. She works one on one with our DonorBox premium clients, plus teaches nonprofit leaders, founders, and fundraisers through webinars, courses, and of course, the nonprofit podcasts. So, welcome, Kara. Thank you. Good to be here. Good to see all of you in the chat. Now, before I pass the baton over to you, I have just a couple of housekeeping items for our guests today. Please note that this presentation will be about an hour long with plenty of time allotted at the end for Q&A. And yes, this webinar is being recorded and all registrants will receive that link to the recording and the resources we mentioned after the webinar via email. So keep an eye out for that by the end of the week. Now, please feel free to drop questions in the chat box. We do not want this to be a one-sided session today. We want to hear from you. And as you drop your questions, I'll be tracking those so that we can answer as many as we can at the end. All right, Kara, I'm going to pass it over to you. Everybody say hi to Kara. Thanks, Jenna. Welcome. You know, at DonorBox, we love sharing practical, actionable learning resources to keep you on top of all that's going on in our rapidly growing nonprofit sector. And I am truly honored to be surrounded by colleagues here at DonorBox who have actually worked in nonprofits. From fundraising to operations to volunteer engagement, donor relations, communications, we've been in your shoes and we get it. And today we are going to be talking about all the chatter that's going to be the next couple of months. And that is getting ready for giving season. And it's really, really great to be having this conversation now. So thank you so much for joining this session today. We are going to talk about why year end fundraising is such a big deal and how to navigate it and hang with us till the end, because we have a couple of special things for you. On our agenda today, we'll talk about why the year end is so important to every nonprofit and hopefully make the case to start planning now. We'll share a snapshot of what a year end plan could look like for you. And then we'll wrap up with a special announcement and by hearing from you with a question and answer session. So please, as we go through this session, enter your questions in the chat and we'll be marking those and get a chance to answer those or at least most of those afterwards. Are you ready to get started? All right, Jenna is going to launch this poll for us. And I really want to get a taste from you of where everyone is coming from when it comes to fundraising. So what is your organization's approach to planning year end fundraising? So go ahead and enter it in the poll, the earlier the better, or maybe we start planning around November, C is we throw something together and just hope for the best. And then D, who has time to plan? Go ahead and put your uh, thoughts on that in the, in the poll section of the webinar. And let's take a look at what they are. All right. Thank you. Thanks for entering all those. Okay. It looks like about half of you are saying the earlier, the better, which is perfect. And then we have a lot to of we post and hope for the best. So I think we'll be working with you today, no matter where you're coming from. And 
a year-end fundraising campaign is really one of the most important initiatives a nonprofit will tackle in any given year. So it is really important to talk about that today. And this is a tough season for fundraising. And so this asks the big question of why now? Why tackle a year-end fundraising campaign now? Well, donors have fewer dollars to give right now in the state of the economy. And it seems like nonprofits are really feeling the pinch and more organizations are asking your donors for support. We are truly living in a time when it's hard to get traction with donors, but donors are the lifeline to keeping our mission moving. It can be overwhelming to know where to start. The important thing is to just get started and we are going to help you with that. All right, I would love some interaction from you in the chat. Go ahead and find the emoji option in the chat box today. And here's another quiz to kickstart our conversation. What do you think, true or false, Giving Tuesday raises the largest percentage of donations in a single day all year long? Do you think it's true or do you think it's false? What do you think? Oh, it's cool to see all the thumbs emojis in the chat. I see a lot of thumbs down for false. There's a couple thumbs up for true. All right. Well, those of you that put the thumbs down emoji in, you are correct. It is false. Were you right? Well, you might think Giving Tuesday is the biggest day for donations, but data on year-end giving statistics really tell a different story. Let's look at what that is. Giving Tuesday is not the biggest giving day of the year. In fact, Giving Tuesday is often the kickoff to the year-end giving season. So take a look at this graph. This is a snapshot of all donor box organizations and what their year end giving looked like last year. You can see that organizations raised a lot of money on Giving Tuesday for sure, right? But holy cow, look at those last few days of the year. More than a third of annual giving occurs those last three months of the year. And most of all that giving happens just in the last, what, 48 hours of the year, which is truly amazing. A lot of organizations put so much emphasis on Giving Tuesday that they overlook December 31st, and they really overlook everything in between the two, and organizations that do that are really missing out. All right, so why is this the case for year-end fundraising? Why is year-end fundraising so important? So let's take a look at what we know. I just mentioned that more than a third of giving for the year happens at year-end. And many of those organizations raise half their income in the last couple of months. I was at a board meeting a couple of weeks ago and we talked about our year-end fundraising plan. And for reference, we pulled out the income sheet from last year and we saw exactly half the revenue for the year came into the organization in November and December for that organization. Most see 50% come in maybe between October, November, and December. And then let's look at this last stat, right? 74% of adults plan to make a charitable contribution this holiday season. But we also know from some other data that these 74% of adults that want to donate are going to select two to three charities during this year end giving season to support. And there are some ways that your organization can be in their top two or three when they think of making a year end gift. How are you feeling about year end fundraising right now? I have a little activity for us today. And if you want to find your emojis in the chat box again, I would love for you to use them. And what we're going to do is choose the emoji that best resonates with you when I talk about some of the common feelings that nonprofit fundraisers have about year end fundraising. So I'd love to gauge how you're feeling about year end fundraising. So first of all, are you feeling any stress? Put an emoji in the chat that shows how you're feeling. Okay. Oh, I see some thumbs up. Okay, that's good. I'm not feeling stressed. Oh, I see some face grimaces, some thumbs down. Yeah, I feel like that's the case a lot. And fundraisers may really feel pressure to meet fundraising goals, especially if your end contributions are crucial to the organization's financial stability. That uncertainty of where to even begin can really intensify that stress. Okay, one more. Let's do another one here. How about time pressure? Again, use your emojis to let me know how you're feeling. All right, okay, I see some thumbs down. Oh my goodness, there's like a fire extinguisher. Okay, we were feeling the pressure here. All right, somebody has a thumbs up. So, and a smile, there's a cry face. Okay, 
I think I feel um, that most nonprofits are really feeling the time crunch on this one. And year-end fundraising campaigns have deadlines and not knowing where to start can really lead to time constraints, especially if you procrastinate. Fundraisers may worry that they won't have enough time to really plan and then execute a successful campaign. And sometimes they don't even get started. All right, let's talk about one more, burnout. How are you feeling about burnout? You feeling okay? You feeling like you can handle it right now? All right, okay, I feel like there's some thumbs up emojis here. Maybe it feels like we haven't quite layered on the stress on top of all the things we have to, to do, and that's okay. Um, I do know that burnout does happen in the nonprofit sector a lot towards year end, and the sheer volume of tasks and the decisions required for year end fundraising really can lead to that burnout. So just be careful and be sure to watch that. And then here's our last one. How are you feeling? Are you feeling confident? Let me know how you feel. Okay, it's looking like it might be a little iffy there. We have a cry face, a clown face. Okay, some thumbs up. Yeah, fundraisers often doubt their ability to really create an effective year-end fundraising campaign, and that can really erode your self-confidence. So thank you for being honest with your answers there. I figured you might likely be feeling a sense of overwhelm, and that's really what I got from, from this reaction in the chat. And this is where a clear, actionable plan plus guidance can really, really help. So let's go into why plan. Well, a good plan helps keep you focused. It stops you from chasing every shiny new idea and it really helps eliminate that stress. So let's talk for a second about focus. So it keeps you focused. Having a plan, especially a written one, really often leads to success because you are not chasing the goal. The goal line is not moving on you. And then knowing you have support and resources to draw from can really help reduce stress and boost your confidence in your own fundraising efforts, which is good. Balance comes with having a plan. When you balance your activities, it means you're not squeezing in too many fundraisers and asks into too short of a time frame that can overwhelm you, can overwhelm, overwhelm your team, it can really overwhelm and annoy your potential donors, and it puts a lot of wear and tear on everyone. And then lastly, when you have a plan, you actually have more time. It allows you to time your appeals for the best results and really reduce that stress and that gift of time. We could all use that, right? So just looking at that words, look at those words with me, focus, less stress, balance, more time. That really brings a sense of calm over me. Does that bring a sense of calm over you as well? Oh, and then there's a bonus. A good plan keeps your board engaged and you can show them exactly what's coming up. You can invite them to choose which activities they want to be involved in. And it gives you the power to kind of deflect their great new ideas um, that they often come up with. Oh, have you thought about this? Let's do this. And you're like, oh no, I've got a plan. We'll stick to that. So you'll be more productive because you're working on tasks that move you towards your goals. You're gonna feel confident that you aren't wasting time on unproductive tasks. And then you're gonna leverage your resource of time and energy and money on things that will give you the greatest return on investment. So let's take a look at what a plan might look like. I've seen a lot of organizations just throw a social media post up on Giving Tuesday and hope that it works, or maybe they share a link to their giving page and just hope for the best. But an actual fundraising campaign is so much more than that. Let's take a look at what your year-end campaign can look like. Let's start with this. A year-end fundraising campaign is a campaign, and it's just that it has a planned set of activities and it has a defined beginning and a defined end. And so if you think about like a political campaign, it kicks off at a certain time, it wraps up at a certain time, or a marketing campaign, you know, I receive the Target ad every week, the sale starts on Sunday and it ends on Saturday, so I know it has a beginning, a military campaign, those kind of things. And a good fundraising campaign is time bound and it's targeted. And it should really hinge around those two things, time bound and targeted. You'll have outbound communication. You won't just be wishing and hoping that all your supporters will come find you. So what do I mean by a targeted campaign? You're gonna have a defined audience. You're gonna identify your key audience before you even plan your materials. And then you have a clear call to action that you can share with each audience. You'll combine your audience and your call to action through some well thought out communication channels and delivery 
and you'll have the best way to reach your supporters to make them move to act. So your campaign is filled with milestones. I just filled in a little bit more on the, on the timeline here. Milestones are represented by these dots. And some milestones are essential prior to your campaign. You see I have two blue dots here before the kickoff. And some milestones run after your campaign, so after that end dot. And what are these milestones? Let's take a closer look at them. Let's break them down. Milestones for your year-end campaign might look like this. A year-end campaign often begins sometime in November, so I put November 1 here, and it wraps up right as we ring in the new year at midnight on December 31st. And Giving Tuesday is usually right in the middle, and that is a very significant milestone. And if you can align your year-end fundraising campaign to include Giving Tuesday, I think that that is a win. Uh, we know that giving last year on Giving Tuesday was a little down, but across all nonprofit organizations, they still raised $3.1 billion on Giving Tuesday. But there is an overwhelming amount of noise on Giving Tuesday, so every organization is emailing and calling and promoting on social media, and it's really hard to be heard among the noise. So I do wanna caution you about that. And that is why standing out among the noise is important, and there's some things that you can do before your campaign starts to really help you stand out. And we spend a lot of time planning to make sure that we have all the, plan, the plans in place for success. And so what does setup entail? First, identifying who is going to be on your fundraising journey with you. Are you a team of one? Are you a small shop? Well, maybe you have some board members or volunteers that can help you. Um, assess your previous results and set a goal for this year. Look at why your donors would choose to support you. What makes you different from every other organization out there? You'll spend some time prepping your tech and your team and getting the messaging and channels aligned. And then you'll need to build in some time for printing and posting, and then take a good look at your, no your donors and see who they are. And maybe that will help you find potential new donors too. And the setup time before the launch of your campaign is a really great time to plan for any campaign matching programs or challenges. And you might have a major donor who could step in and help you with this, but going to them at the last minute is not gonna do them or you any favors for sure. All right, after we work on setup, it's important to take time beforehand to inspire your donors. So over here, after your setup, you're gonna take time and attract donors and be attractive to your donors, right? I can't think of a better time right now and in the next couple weeks to really show your donors some extra care and really make them feel seen. Now is a great time to talk about the impact you've had this year and warm up your donors and get in the forefront of their minds. We know that donors are going to support a couple organizations this year. If you only approach them when you need money, you're gonna violate the trust. Instead, build trust with them and show them all the things that their previous donations have done to make this world a bigger place. So, a better place, sorry. So what are your favorite ways to inspire your donors? Will you put that in the chat? What are some things? I know last night, um, I'm a volunteer for an organization and I, um, the staff members gave me a list of 10 names and some thank you cards, and I hand wrote some thank you cards. So that might be something you choose to do. Okay, let's look in the chat here. A thankathon, yes, brilliant with thank you calls. You could do donor surveys. I love that idea. Lots of thank yous, phone calls, a postcard. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, it, those are really, really great ideas. And we had an organization share with us recently that they just received their 501c3 status. And that's something that can really be celebrated and communicated right now too, those kind of little victories for your organization. All right, now we move into kickoff mode. In November, you are going to plan to announce your campaign. You're gonna send your first set of emails or letters, social media posts, and you'll need to reinforce those messages. Okay, who can tell me how many times do we as people need to hear a message and have the message reinforced before we act on it? Put that in the chat, what do you think? That's right, I see three, 10, seven, seven is the rule of sevens an old marketing adage and it's been around for, for decades, but that number seven isn't really cast in stone. I think I've heard even more like it might be nine now, um, but the rule of seven means that you cannot just throw a communications or marketing activity out there, and be done with it and wish for the best. Your messaging must be an ongoing process for it to be successful. And then more milestones. We built in a few more right before December 31st. We inspired before our November kickoff, right? Okay. We 
got ahead of the Giving Tuesday noise by communicating before Giving Tuesday. We jumped on the Giving Tuesday train and put a hard push for the few days around Giving Tuesday. And then, then it's the run into December. So remember, those last few days of the year are so important. Most of that giving happens the last 48 hours. So we must remind donors of the great giving opportunities and the difference their gift will make in the world. And this is when campaign goal meters and countdown reminders are really, really very helpful. And they convey urgency and progress to your goal. All right. And then as we cross into the new year, we pause and we catch our breath. And hopefully you'll be busy on gift entry and measuring your progress to, toward the goal. You'll spend some time in January issuing your tax receipts. That can all be very transactional. You really want to share a genuine appreciation and show the results of your year-end campaign and how the dollars that people gave to you have gone right to work. We often rush through the planning and wrap up, but we really need to fit, um, spend time to make sure that we're wrapping things up well because those are important to success now and in the future. And Jenna has a downloadable of this for you and she'll go ahead and launch that. Thank you, Jenna. So we know from years of research, most organizations start this whole process in October. So let's get a leg up on it and start it a couple weeks early. We've seen many organizations just throw that social media post up on Giving Tuesday and wonder why it doesn't work. It really makes sense to start planning early and we want to ensure the success of your year end campaign, especially since so many fundraising appeals go out at the same time, which can overwhelm donors and overwhelm your team. And so creating a comprehensive plan is hard to do well when it's squeezed in as just another task on your to-do list. It's hard work. And so because of that, we've been working on something very special for you. We just launched DonorBox Academy in the last year, and we had you in mind when we created when we created it and we created this class. So we saw a big gap in fundraising info. There's so much information out there and there's really, really good information out there too, but it's hard to know how to apply it. So how, like, you know, let's say you download a checklist from an inter, from a website, a fundraising site, and you say, how can I apply this really great checklist to create a year in fundraising campaign when I don't understand what each thing on it means? So maybe your checklist says, write fundraising appeals, and that sounds really great, but what goes into a fundraising appeal? And that topic alone is really deep and detailed. And there are so many elements that are unique to a fundraising appeal that a lot of organizations are really unaware of. So to help with applying all of that information into something actionable, we've created DonorBox Academy to help bridge that gap between knowledge and application. Learning about something and actually putting it into action to raise money is, is a big thing. So for anyone who's a little overwhelmed by all the things we talked about that goes into a year-end fundraising campaign, or you want to get a jump start on giving season, we have the first of this year's masterclass for you. Um, it's a course that we launched a year ago and got rave reviews. We really helped some students put together a plan that helped them raise money last year. And what we do is we um, provide a special level of support to help anyone who enrolls in the class create their plan and have it ready now so that they can breathe easier later. And what we do when we walk through it is we put all of these moving parts together. And these are the things that you need to tackle between now and year end. So make sure that you're assembling your team and you collaborate around all that goes into a successful campaign. Maybe divide up tasks and understand who's going to be responsible for what. Then you'll create a fundraising goal and be able to communicate your why or your case for support, right? And then you'll identify audience segments. You'll prep your tech and your team and get everything ready in place to collect donations. And then make sure that your donors have a terrific giving experience when you set up a branded giving page. You'll plan a timeline to make sure you're communicating the right message to the right people at the right time. And then you'll wrap it all up by writing and scheduling your fundraising appeals. You'll craft a few versions of a fundraising appeal that um, kind of have that core messaging. And then you'll learn how to syndicate it for direct mail or email and social media too. And we'll work through you through each of these steps and give you what you need to put it all into motion. And I'll say that the workload is going to be a little heavy, but it re will really be worth it, especially come November when you can breathe a little easier and sleep at night knowing you have a plan put in motion. And we're gonna do it 
like this. What we'll do is meet each week um, and then we'll release new content to you. You'll have a special portal that will have additional resources and homework to help with different topics. And you'll get a workbook to compile all your notes. And this workbook will really help you guide through all the things and stay on task. We're going to meet together once a week on Tuesdays at 1 p.m. Eastern time. You'll have that guided workbook plus resources and templates. And at the end, you'll have your whole plan. And then as part of the course, you'll receive writing critiques and feedback on your year end communications. And that will be done by our team of fundraising experts here at DonorBox. And then the best part, I think, is that you'll get to block time on your calendar to be intentional about working on your plan. And um, we could probably even have some weekly check ins if needed. So what's the catch, right? I know there's a fee for this course. It is $149. And you're like, why should I even charge for that? Well, the information is valuable. I have colleagues who will work with you in a consulting relationship at other organizations that's valued at hundreds of dollars an hour. And we really want you to benefit from the same care. I know you can do this on your own. There's a ton of great information floating around out there, but it really is overwhelming. And so those of us on the DonorBox team have already spent countless hours and a lot of trial and error learning the best practices for planning and implementing a successful year-end campaign. So consider it a shortcut for you. And like I said, you could do it all on your own for sure, but the staff time you'll save by having the process delivered to you could be really valuable. Um, Jenna will launch this enrollment link for us and, and, and enrollment will be open until the class begins at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, September 26th, and then the doors close and because you're on this webinar today, I want to extend to you a special extra discount. You can use the promo code webinar, W-E-B-I-N-A-R, to register for the course and get 20% off. And again, we're going to be partnering with you for this whole process. You will need to prepare to do some work. I'd say plan to dedicate two to three hours a week to the course. But at the end, you're going to have a year end campaign ready and raring to go. So it's kind of like set it and forget it. Right. And move on to the things that you enjoy during the holiday season. So, again, you can register at academy.genderbox.org and enter the promo code webinar and you will get 20 percent off until the course starts on Tuesday. All right. We'll wrap up our session today as you consider your year end plan and you think about registering for the masterclass. I want to leave you with a practical action that will boost your year-end fundraising. And this is something you could put into action right away, right as you get off this webinar. If you called me up and said, ask me to consult with you on your organization, on something that you could do right now to get ready for your year-end fundraising. One of you put this in the chat even, I would share this with you. Host a thankathon. Thank your donors. You have a diverse group of donors. Thank them in all kinds of different ways. Send a video, make a phone call. Um, show up next to them while they volunteer, send a postcard, send a text, whatever it is to say thank you and I see you. All right, I'm excited to hear how that goes. So please be sure to send us a note and let us know. Um, all right, let's move on to questions and answers. Jenna, will you join me back? Now we're on to questions and answer with a Q&A time here. I see that the chat has been super busy. I'm very excited about this. There has been lots of engagement in the chat. Kara, thank you for that and everyone for uh, interacting in the chat. That's what we love to see. I know we do have some questions waiting for us, so we'll go ahead and dive in. Again, I did launch the sign up link for the 30 days to your end course. You can see that in the bottom left hand corner of your screen. And again, the promo code for that is webinar for 20% off. All right, Carrie, we're ready to dive in. To Let's the do it. Awesome. And if for some reason any of you have to jump off, we would love for you to stay, but you can always reach out to us at academy at donorbox.org with any questions you may have. And for those of you who joined us later, um, we, yes, we will be sending the recording to you. Make sure that you mark webinars at donorbox.org as a safe sender. Make sure that it's going to your inbox and you will see that recording for you. And of course, you can always reach out to us if you don't see it. All right, you ready? Let's do it. Um, I love this question from Michelle. Should I do both Giving Tuesday and a year-end campaign? 
Yeah, absolutely. I definitely do not think you should overlook Giving Tuesday, but more importantly, I would not want you to overlook the time between Giving Tuesday and December 31st. A lot of organizations don't have nearly as much success when they hinge their fundraising on either or. Um, and so, yes, I would suggest perhaps using Giving Tuesday as a major milestone in your campaign and then being sure to take the conversation, take the communication that you're sharing on Giving Tuesday throughout the month of December and um, making sure to reemphasize that, uh, the importance, your why um, during those important last weeks of the year. Um, I'll also say that it is hard. It's hard to maintain that momentum. And so that's why it's important to plan to map out your communications ahead of time. Excellent. Thank you. We have a lot rolling in too. So thanks yeah. for bearing with us as we mark these, make sure we don't miss anything. This question from Ashley, I think is regarding our premium donor box clients. So how yeah. many of your clients are 501c4 versus 501c3? Most are 501c3. Um, we do have a lot of donor box users that are 501c4. That's not where most of my experience is, however. So um, I don't have a lot of coaching experience there or practical experience. Thank you. Now, um, this question from, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Tay, our nonprofit organization is located in Mexico. Do you think that Giving Tuesday would apply to us as well? Absolutely. Giving Tuesday is a global movement. It was started maybe in 2012 or something, and it, it definitely is a day to celebrate generosity. Um, so yes, I, th I think any uh, nonprofit in any country could definitely benefit from joining the momentum on Giving Tuesday. We do know that Giving Tuesday donations were down last year. We I'm guessing that they'll be down again this year just because fundraising is down a little bit this year. Um, so don't anchor everything that you do on Giving Tuesday. I also don't know if Mexico year-end fundraising is important in the United States because there is that deadline, that December 31st deadline. Donors in the United States often get a tax advantage when they give to charitable organizations within the calendar year. So I don't know if Mexico offers that and why, and if that is a compelling um, deadline as well. So that may be something you consider. Thank you. Okay, this is record, regarding the donor box course. Um, Terry asks, if I have to miss, miss one of the live sessions in Academy, will they get a recording of the session? Yeah, absolutely. You get your own module um, and we upload all the recordings about an hour, well, probably a couple hours after each session, um, but all the content and downloadable material is there for you. Excellent, and I think we may have a few questions um, in that same lane. So hopefully that yep. answered that for a few folks. Now, Ola asks, um, I think that they wanted to see the slide again, um, the 30 days to your year end campaign, the kind of bright blue with the learning objectives on it, what you're work, working through from oh, sure. the end. Um, Ola, correct me if that's this wrong. One, yeah. um, this one. one before, I think. Okay, this one, yeah, yes. mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, we will work through each of those things and you can use this as a guideline for all the things that you'll need to um, make sure that you check off your list as you plan your year-end fundraising campaign. Excellent. I am scrolling through. We have so many questions, Kara. Yes. So this is rapid fire for you and yeah, everyone. Thank you for these thoughtful questions. Now, um, Sandy asks, how often do you offer this masterclass? So last year we offered it three times. Uh, this year we're offering it live once. Um, if there is demand for it, I think we can put that same course offering on demand once it's complete. Um, but I don't have plans for that yet. So I'd love to know if that's something that you'd be interested in. Excellent. Now Lillian asks, would this course make sense for their organization if they're just starting out and their lo their donor list isn't huge yet and they don't have any individual supporters yet? Okay. Um, Lillian, I'm imagining most of your money's coming from grants or corporations if you don't have a ton of individual supporters yet. This course is geared toward in, uh, raising support from individual 
donors. So if that's an area you want to grow in, I think it would definitely help. Um, we could work with you to, to think through who some target segments might be, who some logical um, outreach might be. I like to always start from the inside out. So your board, their networks, um, people who have seen your organization in motion. Um, but I'd be happy to talk more. You'd welcome to shoot us an email at academy at donorbox.org with more specifics if you want. And I can, I can work through that with you. Excellent. Thank you. So Susanna says, I just started as a fundraising manager and um, she is trying to find their first round of supporters since they don't have a donor database yet. I'm not sure how to leverage any specifics um, for support for year end giving. So you spoke to that yeah. just now. OK, later. yeah. Yeah. Working from your year end out or from your inside out. So who sees your mission in motion? That's who I would go to first. If you have volunteers, if you have people who you know are um, care about that cause. And then as personal of an outreach as you can make it is always optimal. So if you can meet with someone in person and maybe treat them to a cup of coffee and explain what your mission is and ask them for their opinion and their support and would they like to get engaged further and just kind of really just build on that over and over. You can also do that on a mass scale if you have an email list um, something like that, you, you can definitely kind of engage the support that way. Um, if you're offering some sort of value, so uh, if you're creating innovative blog posts or newsletter content and things like that, it's a good way to get signups and get those people kind of moved into your um, donor acquisition pipeline as well. Thank you very much for that. And I think you answered that question for several people good. here. Now, shifting from individual donors, um, what about grants and foundation requests? Would this be a time to focus on that during year end, or would you suggest a different approach at a different time? That's so hard. Um, I think it just depends on the relationship you have with those foundations and with those grantors. So getting those people in to see uh, your mission in action, if you have a serving opportunity, that kind of thing, having those one-on-one -on -one relationships and growing those one-on-one -on -one relationships with the decision makers there to understand from them what is ideal for them. Um, they often have certain windows that are important to them. So you need to apply by this date and our decision will be made at this date. So getting to know the decision makers behind those organizations is probably key. But a lot of the same things that we talk about with individuals. So. I mentioned that if you only go to people when you need something, when you're asking them for money, it's kind of a turnoff. Those organizations, especially corporate supporters and things like that, often feel that way too, as opposed to throughout the year or throughout at least this season, showing impact, telling a story of someone who was helped or something that was helped because of your organization, um, being sure to, to thank them for their previous support um, so I, I don't know, um, is my answer completely for that? It probably just depends on the organization. And I would encourage you to, as a person, meet with the person behind the organization and really start cultivating that relationship. Now, I think this is a really interesting question. Yeah. Mary says, I serve as board chair. My CEO refuses to include any donors who gave during the year on the solicitation list for our year end appeal. Mm -hmm. How can I convince her that this is not really great form and that the people who have given throughout the year are in fact more likely to give at year end? Absolutely, they are. That is money for your valuable money for your organization. They are likely maybe giving to another organization who is asking them this time of year. I would say, first of all, make sure that you are doing a good job throughout the year communicating with those donors, building that relationship, saying thank you, showing them how their money is used, account, uh, acknowledging their gifts and being accountable for their gifts. And then as you go into year end, it's OK to create a special segment for those donors to say, I see you. Thank you for giving. As you consider your year end contributions, would you make an additional gift at this level? Um, I have an organization that we're working with that they've determined that to feed one family in their food pantry, it costs thirty dollars. And so what they're doing is they're going to their existing supporters and say, either um, they're taking a look at them and saying, you know, if you give monthly, would you would you consider encouraging your or in, 
increasing your monthly donation by $30 to feed one additional family, or if it's you know a, a small level donor that's given maybe $25 once or twice a year, they're going to them and saying, would you make an additional $30 year end donation to feed one more family? And so that's a good way to do it, but recognize that you see them and then yes, ask them for support. I think the argument here is if you're not asking them, someone else is, and then they may swoop them up and do a better job of caring for them throughout the year and you may lose that donor overall. Excellent advice. And this is a perfect segue to Tim's question. Thinking about this, how can I make sure that I'm not being too pushy with my donors? And um, like you said, there's a balancing act here, right? With your communications. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we can dig it up for you. Maybe Kara um, in the chat can look for it. We have, um, we often talk about through DonorBox Academy, through our webinars and workshops, we talk about the five A's of awesome fundraising and ask is only one of the A's. So what you're doing is you are attracting new supporters and you're being attractive to those supporters. You're asking them to come alongside you by giving, you're acknowledging their contributions, you're accounting for their gifts, and then you're keeping them in conversation again and again, and you're repeating that cycle. We have a podcast episode on that, um, and maybe we can drop that in the chat. It's called the five A's of awesome fundraising, and it explains that a little bit better. Um, it, what I often say to people is that that ask seems exponentially big in the fundraiser's mind. I get to spend so much time gearing up for the ask. I have to make the ask. I have to make the ask clear and compelling. But when you're doing all those other things right and you're doing them well, your donors will raise their hand enthusiastically and say, yes, I see. I understand why you're asking me for money because I see the important things that you're doing in this community. You see me as a donor. Yes, I will support you. Um, so when you're doing those other things and spending a lot of effort on those other things, the ask gets a little easy. Um, also, just, you know, I also focus on and we'll focus on this in the class is building this out for you in a custom way. What's the big problem that you solve in this world? What's the unique way that you solve it? And how can a donor come alongside you? Remember that donors don't give to you. They give through you to remedy that big problem. So that might just be a perspective change too. just remembering that they're not giving to you. They're giving to the, the reason that you exist. And I'll try to, if Kara hasn't dropped it already, okay. since from the questions tab, I can't see, I will try to dig up that podcast episode. And I think okay. that five A's is a really great thing. Yeah. Um, and I think if you that. just Google five A's of awesome fundraising, you could probably find that podcast episode on YouTube. I'll do my best to drop it yeah. in the chat. Now, Kathy asked a question. She wants to learn more about DonorBox, music yeah. to my ears, and uh, looking for some extra resources. Kathy, I have your email because you registered for this webinar. We have blogs, we have YouTube videos, we have um, academy courses, we also have automated demos and one-on-one -on -one demos if you want to book something with our team. So let me go ahead and reach out to you via email and I'll send all those resources, resources your way and you can choose um, which one will work best for you. Um, and for anybody else who wants to learn more about DonorBox, um, you can always reach out to us at support at donorbox.org and you can always drop it in the chat and I can send all those resources to you as well. So thank you for that, Kathy. The demo is my favorite. I, I learned so much but when I watched the demo. So and you can, I think there's a sticky bar on the website and you can sign up for yes. that demo. Yeah, donorbox.org in that top uh, kind of top banner area. You can always book a demo. We do them every Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern and they're only 30 minutes long. Okay, uh, Stephanie asks, how early is too early to start a year end campaign? Thinking She's thinking about starting it October 1st. <sighs> If you're thinking about wrapping it up December 31st, that might be a little too early, um, just because I think you might get some fatigue from your supporters. Um, however, your organization is unique, your cause is unique, um, so I don't know the answer to that. Um, my first inclination is October 1 to December 31st is a little long. But you can, I have an organization that we're working with that is doing a mini campaign, so they're just doing a two or three week email campaign they're gonna pause and then kick off uh, their year-end fundraising around Giving Tuesday. So they're actually getting two campaigns in in that same amount of time. I think that's a great idea. Also, I, I often forget to throw this out. As people give, this is a personal 
pet peeve plus a, a, a fundraising no-no. As people give, please pull them out of your appeals list, your email list and things like that, and put them into another cycle of saying thank you and showing support. Um, it, it says, I do not see you. Um, and that's the opposite of what you want your supporters to feel. They want to feel they want to feel seen and you want to make them feel seen. Now, John asks, can this webinar be seen again by their team? Yes, it can. We're going to send you the recording via email. Don't you worry. You can replay it whenever you like. Um, let's see. So Lillian asks, uh, they think that they're looking on how to attract new donors mostly. Mm -hmm. Would the class cover any aspect of this? We talk a little bit about acquisition. Um, I think where I really want to, I would like to see a lot of um, organizations focus their energy this year is on renewing supporters. It costs a lot less money to um, go to previous donors for support than to try to find new donors. Um, however, I know that's not the case, but yes, we're going to be talking about some approaches like peer to peer fundraising and some crowdfunding campaigns that will definitely boost your donor acquisition. Um, social media is often perceived as a good way to acquire new donors. And what we're seeing right now is it's really good for building awareness, but the donor acquisition is really a, a, an outbound intentional ask. So maybe thinking through some ways to get people aware of your organization and then making sure you know who they are and then asking them for support within your campaign would be a good way to work on acquisition. Thank you. Uh, you're doing so great with all these questions. I am hurling at you and we still have quite a few more. Uh, we do have a bit of time, so we're working our way through. And again, if for some reason we missed your question or we can't get to it, please reach out to us at academy at donorbox.org and we'd love to answer them for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I love this question, and I know you will be talking about this in the course as well. Are there best practices on the number of donor messages and cadence? Mm, yeah, there are. And um, we will be talking in depth about this in the course. But I would say um, it, it probably just depends on the season and the urgency. So your cadence right now should in the five A's should probably be talking about um, attracting your making your organization attractive to supporters if they've given before acknowledging their gifts through a thinkathon showing impact through social media or whatever it is showing that you are relevant um, you'll go through a season of heavy asks right now especially year-end fundraising but making sure that you are nurturing your donors throughout is important um, most of the time it's like two non-ask touch points for every ask touch points but we do know this time of year is very ask heavy so it throws off that ratio a little bit excellent and oh, this question from kathy and i think this might be one for me kara do you support peer-to-peer -peer campaigns and are they successful yes donor box does we do have a peer-to-peer -peer campaign um, option so when you create your fundraising page you can enable peer-to-peer -peer right there on the page you can invite fundraisers they can make their own pages exactly as you would expect with peer-to-peer -peer. and we have seen lots of successful fundraisers through peer-to-peer. -peer. We do, in fact, have um, several DonorBox peer-to-peer blogs with best practices, case studies, really great examples, and of course, a walkthrough of how to uh, use DonorBox peer-to-peer -peer specifically. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can't drop at least a blog or two in the chat for you. And Kathy, I'm making note of that as well. So um, I've got your email and I'm more than happy to share more. So reaching out to your donors, best practices, do you think uh, emails are better, text message is better? Can you use both? What are your thoughts on that, Kara? Multi-channel, omni-channel. Um, yes, we mentioned that donors off, or any of us need to hear messages often seven times before they take action. And so it's always a great idea to create your core messaging and then know how to syndicate it per channel. And it's a really great idea to use almost every channel at your disposal, especially at your end, because you're re-emphasizing your, um, that same core messaging. And in the course, we're gonna work on creating the core messaging and then using it as an anchor and syndicating it for multi-channel approach. But yes, 100%. 
Email, yes. Text message, yes. Send a letter, make a phone call, do all the things. Um, yeah. Yes. But don't say that, don't put, don't do the same thing in your mailed appeal that you do in your email appeal that you put in social media. You syndicate it, you alter it a little bit, but it's still recognizable. Now, David asks, great question. What's the ideal budget for a fundraising campaign? Tricky. Um, I think it completely depends on your organization. Mm -hmm. I have seen nonprofits with no budget do an okay job. Um, and then, you know, you have the large, uh, long standing hundred year old nonprofit charities that spend literally millions of dollars on fundraising campaigns. Uh, I think the small scrappy campaigns usually work quite well, but it, it just depends on how well you know your audience, how clear your messaging is, how you're delivering it to them, and are you being personal? So um, I always like to start with the warmer donors and move to the cooler donors because I think your message will resonate a little bit more with that because they have seen your work in action and hopefully you've done an okay job building that relationship with them. So, so yeah, I, I, I don't know without knowing your organization what you have yeah. to spend. I'm personally working on one that has no budget. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if it does, it's coming out of volunteers pockets and it, it'll, it'll go, it'll do just fine. Yep. I was about to say the same thing. I mean, no size or not, it's not one size fits all. We've seen organizations. Great thing is email is free. Yeah. Messaging your donors is free. A phone call is free. Now you're looking Social at targeted media. campaigns or direct mail, you know, of course yeah. your budget can really vary, but there are things that are really effective that you can do that don't cost anything but your time and some yeah. creativity. Now, Jane says they want to do um, like an informational session for their donors and future donors, tell them all yes. about the organization. Uh, and uh, she asked, you know, what what day do you find is a good turnout? What time? Keeping in mind donors all over the U.S. and Europe. Mm -hmm. And what's great is we have folks all the time from all over the world logging into our webinars. Um, and of course, keeping in mind Europe is six hours ahead, maybe. Noon is a good time because then your U.S. folks are on lunch and um, folks in Europe, Europe, Europe is um, yeah still in the evening. Yeah, yeah they found down their work day. Now they've got some free time. Mm -hmm. What I would say is send out a donor survey. Tell them what you're up to. Ask them exactly what you just asked us because they'll appreciate the thoughtfulness and the communication and they'll tell you, you know, exactly what you need to know. So that's yeah. what I would say there. It takes a little experimenting, but you can always go straight to the source. That is perfect. And it gives you another donor touch point to those MVP donors to say, I see you. I care what you have to think about when you say, what time of day is good for you? What what platform would you like to meet on? How would you like to do this? And just get some feedback. It shows, I see you. I'm asking you your opinion. You're more than a transaction to me. Well, Kara, I think we plugged our way through most of these questions. Again, if somehow we skipped over you or you're looking for a little more information, please, please reach out to us at academy at donorbox.org. We can, um, you know, answer more questions about the course, just about your end. If you want to learn more about Donorbox, we've got you covered and we're always happy to hear from you. And don't forget to sign up for the course. You do have a special promo code, 20% off using the promo code webinar. And again, you will see that link in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. All you have to do is click sign up today. And everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. We are always so thrilled to see you in the chat. And uh, thank you for all that you do to serve others. We know that you're gonna have a great year end. And Kara, thank you for all of your time. Well, thanks, Jenna. Thanks for hosting today. It is always great to be with you. All right, everyone. Hopefully we'll see you in the Academy and we'll talk to you, talk to you soon. Have a great one.